Good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Joe Davich. I'm the executive director here at the Georgia Center for the Book. And on behalf of the Georgia Center for the Book and DeKalb County Public Library, welcome to another one of our virtual events. Last night, of course, we celebrated our seventh annual fall book preview. Every year, we gather in the fall with representatives from publishing houses to discuss the big books and books that are, you should know that are coming out this fall. For the first time, we've actually started a fall book preview for children's and young people's literature. And we're so happy to present that to you this evening. Just a few things uh, before we get started. Don't forget that you can always type questions that you have in the chat feature. Um, and we will provide you with a link for the event when it's posted tomorrow, as well as our emails. Um, of course, we are doing a very traditional book giveaway this year, um, which is why we asked for your email addresses when we had you sign up in Eventbrite. But if you forgot to do that or you signed up after 4 p.m. this evening, um, do go ahead and um, let us know your address um, with the email contact information provided to you. We are actually going to do a porch drop off for you. This is inspired by many of the independent bookstores here in the Atlanta area that dropped off books on people's doors when they ordered them during the pandemic that we are still going through. Um, so you will probably find on your porch after our raffle, these lovely little bags filled with many of the books um, that the publishers provided as giveaways this evening. Um, you may not get the sparkly white bag. After three weeks of doing contactless pickup at our library system, we are completely out of our read more bags um, and have had to order more. So they may be a little less sparkly, but nonetheless filled with goodies for you all. You know, Decatur is such a vibrant and literary town. We have so many independent bookstores, stores like Little Shop of Stories, Brave and Kind, um, independent bookstores that are general bookstores that have great children's sections as well, like Eagle Eye and Karis. But we also want to remind you all to shop our independent bookstores that are our black owned businesses and our independent black bookstores as well. Um, so right now I would like to turn this over to two representatives who are going to talk to you about all of the wonderful books coming out this fall. I'm very excited for these presentations as well because they include many Georgians who have books coming out like Nick Stone for her new one that's coming out, debut author GZ Schmidt who has Georgia Connections as well as Nanima Florina, who has, um, it was a graduate of Spelman, who has a debut novel coming out. So these and many more you are going to be introduced to tonight. So I'd like to turn this over right now and welcome Lauren Mackey and Donnie Kay from Penguin Random House. Lauren? Hi, hi everybody, excited to be here. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So give me one sec. And let's Do you all see a PowerPoint? Not yet. Not yet, okay. We just did this. Let's try one more time. Um, screen. Do you see a PowerPoint now? Yes. Okay, so you great. just go ahead and start the slide. All right, everybody. My name is Lauren Mackey. I am the Southeastern sales rep for independent bookstores with Random House Children's Books. And the first book I am thrilled to present to you is by New York, number one New York Times bestselling author, Dan Brown. You all know him from The Da Vinci Code, but I am here to introduce him to you as a children's book author. So Dan wrote Wild Symphony, illustrated by Susan Batori, who you may know as the illustrator of Hey Grand Dude by Sir Paul McCartney, which came out last year. All right, so Wild Symphony is a, a book of songs throughout so you'll travel through the trees and across the seas with Maestro Mouse and his musical friends. Young readers will meet the big blue whale and the, the speedy cheetahs, tiny beetles and graceful swans. Each has a secret to share. Along the way, you might spot the surprises Maestro Mouse has left for you. A hiding buzzing bee, jumbled letters that spell out clues and even a coded message to solve. Also, you can follow along with the music if when you download the free app that goes with the book. So not only do you get the beautiful illustrations and the music and the songs, but you also get the music. Um, here, I should have shared this before, but here is one of the spreads just to get an idea of what the illustrations look like and the format. So each page 
kept monkey up all night. So this is the next installment in our Grumpy Monkey series. Um, it's everyone's favorite monkey. So in this one, Jim Pansy is dealing with his first sleepover and he is so bummed out that he is the only one who wants to stay up all night. He has plans to bob for mangoes, but each one of his friends falls asleep one by one and Jim just does not know how to deal with his feelings about this. Um, in each Grumpy Monkey book, there is also an emotional literacy component to it. So while we have a hilarious story, we also have a lesson. Next is one of my personal favorites on the list, Attack of the Underwear Dragon. Oh my gosh, I love this book. Underwear is always a perennial favorite. Um, Cole's dream is to become a knight and he's thrilled to earn a knight's apprenticeship. When Sir Percival cannot uh, deal with the underwear dragon who's coming to destroy the kingdom, Cole has to act. Um, the book ends in a hilarious way with underwear falling off the dragon and it is just so funny and worth the read. So I don't know about you, but I am super tired of pink unicorns. I am thrilled that we have a unicorn book with a sophisticated palette. This is an instant classic. Margaret's whole world changes when her family moves to a cottage by the sea. One evening, she finds a lonely baby unicorn and they form a beautiful friendship. When spring comes, Margaret must send the unicorn back to her family. But when she does this, she makes a new friend too. So this is just a beautiful story about friendship and letting go and new friendships forming. So RH Graphic, um, last year, actually this year, we launched RH Graphic, which is a new graphic novel imprint. As y'all know, graphic novels are on the rise like crazy. So we have different age levels of these. Um, this one is an early reader. This is Donut Feed the Squirrels. In this story, you combine squirrels and a donut food truck. This is perfect for fans of narwhal and jelly and who wouldn't want to do anything with a donut? So this is just a wonderful transitional chapter book that helps fill the graphic, the hole in the graphic novel market between Elephant and Piggy and Dogman. Next is The Witches of Brooklyn. This was an actually an Indies introduced pick, which was awesome. It is a middle grade graphic novel adventure filled with magical jinx for fans of Phoebe and her unicorn and making friends. In this story, Effie lost her mom in her home. Now she has to live with two strange aunts who she's never met before. Life in Brooklyn takes a strange twist for Effie as she learns more about her family and herself. With new friends who will do whatever they can to be there for her, a cursed pop star and two magically inclined family members, Effie's life is about to get really interesting. So who doesn't love witches? I know I do. Another graphic novel, Max, Meow, and the Cat Crusaders. So this book has a ton of cat puns in it and it's just wonderful. Um, Max Meow Cat Crusader is a super secret superhero with catitude in his perfectly awesome, hysterically funny new middle grade series. Max is just a regular cat in Kittyopolis trying to make it as a big podcaster until he accidentally takes a bite of a radioactive space meatball at his friend, friend's secret lab. Then Max becomes the Cat Crusader. Being a superhero is fun, but not when you get so cocky you forget your best friend. Will Max learn to listen? Will he and his scientist friend make up? And together, can Max and Mindy save Kittyopolis from the evil Agent M and Big Boss? This is the first in a series. We are so excited about this. We would love it to kind of be the next, another book for Dogman fans to read. Um, next is one of my favorites. This is the second book in the Max and the Midnight series, Battle of the Bod uh, Max and the Midnight series by Lincoln Purse. This is Battle of the Bodkins. I don't know if you've read book one, but Max is actually a girl. So it's really cool having a female knight character. Um, Max didn't expect night school to be so tough. But luckily she has her best friends, the Midnights at her side. But when Bajovia is under attack, the Midnights will have to face beastly creatures, powerful spells and their greatest foe yet themselves. So in this one, they're kind of competing against each other of who's gonna be the best in the school. All right, this is one that everybody has been thrilled about. This is a YA graphic novel. We know there aren't very many of these on the market right now, and this is also an Own Voices um, graphic novel. Tian loves his family and his friends, but Tian has a secret he's been keeping from them, and it might change everything. Is there a way to tell him he's gay? An amazing YA graphic novel that deals with the complexity of family and how stories can bring us together. 
the artwork is absolutely stunning. Um, I will be more than happy to share spreads with you if you want. <laughs> um, now we're into middle grade. So this is When Life Gives You Mangoes. This was actually our RHCB rep pick. Every season we get behind one middle grade book and this was our fall 2020 pick. So in this book, 12-year-old um, Clara lives in an island that visitors call exotic, but there's nothing exotic about it to Clara. She enjoys eating ripe mangoes off the ground, running outside in the rain. The only thing out of the ordinary for Clara is that something happened to her memory that made her forget everything that happened last summer after a hurricane hit. Sometimes things come back to her. Other times her mama has to fill in the blanks. Only she knows those aren't her memories and it is so hard feeling she's not like everybody else. This story had a phenomenal ending and it is one of the only unpredictable middle grade endings that I have seen in a long, long time. So I encourage everybody to read this book. Um, I absolutely loved it. Another middle grade I was super excited about and am excited about, um, Millionaires for the Month. This is by Stacey McNulty. She is the author of The Miscalculations of Lightning Girl, which was just a smash hit for us. So the premise of this one is, how would you spend $5 million in 30 days? These kids receive a billionaire's wallet, a bizarre challenge, and unlikely friendships to send them on a wild adventure. This is filled, about, filled with lessons about life, friendship, and what money can and can't buy. And I love the cover of this book. Uh, Chris Grabenstein, we all love Chris Grabenstein. This is a new series by him. You might know him from Mr. Lemoncello and um, I am blanking on the other series, the beach mystery series, the beach adventure series that he does. But this one is awesome. Jake takes a, a super secret jelly bean pill on accident and now he's the smartest kid in the universe. The pills haven't been tested yet. And when word gets out about his new genius, people want him. The government, the mega corporations, everybody. And not all of them are good. Jake, can Jake navigate all the ins and outs of his new friend genius dumb? Not to mention the ins and outs of middle school and use his smarts to figure out how to save his school. Hint, it will take someone smart enough to decipher an almost forgotten pirate legend. It turns out sometimes even the smartest kids have a lot to learn. Absolutely love this book. So the next three middle grade titles I'm sharing with you are nonfiction. Um, the talk was edited by Cheryl and Wade Hudson. And this is a, um, a, comp a, comp a compilation of essays that parents of diverse kids and diverse people have. I mean, the contributors are listed below, but these are actual talks that these people have had with their kids. So it gets into the ins and outs of what society thinks about them, what culture thinks, and just how to get through life. There are some really tough conversations in here. I encourage everybody to read this. It is one of those story, one of those books that you can just read one or two essays, put it down, read a couple more, put it down. They get really heavy, but it is so important. And I am so grateful that this book is on our list. The next one, The Warrior Challenge. Um, so this is all about raising empathetic, sympathetic boys. We live in a very macho culture that celebrates being tough. This book kind of fights for the opposite of that, just encouraging kindness and sensitivity in boys. Next is Superpowered. Um, I think we all can agree that we're in a very tough time right now. And this book is more important than ever. It deals with anxiety and mental health and how to transition your anxiety into a positive. And there are really cool puzzles and things in this book too. All right, now we're into YA, fantasy and magic, um, Serpentine. So this is a novella by Philip Pullman. And this is set after the His Dark Materials series, but before those of The Secret of the Commonwealth. In Serpentine, a teenage Lyra returns to the town of Trunzel, the setting of her first encounter with Ira Burnson and Lee Scoresbury in The Golden Compass. Lyra and Pan are older and a little wiser and in search of an answer to a shocking secret condition, their ability to separate from the witch consul, Dr. Lanthius. What unfolds is a tender revelatory scene that foreshadows Lyra's future struggles as a young woman and provides insight into Pullman's own early exploration of a previously unthinkable plot development that would emerge in the Book of Dust sequence. The idea that a human's bond with their daemon it, it can be irreparably broken. So this is, I've, I have not read The Golden Compass since I was a kid, but I know people are 
just the, uh, the secret of the common series and the his dark and the book of dust came out a couple years ago all right so nick stone um joe gave her a wonderful introduction before this is dear justice this is a sequel to dear martin um nick is a rock star everything she writes is just so good and so needed in the world today um so in the secret in the sequel to dear martin um we hear letters from justice the protagonist in dear, in dear martin Quan's story takes form troubles at home and misunderstandings at school give rise to police encounters and tough decisions but then there's a dead cop and a weapon with Quan's prints on it what leads a bright kid down the road to a murder charge not even Quan is sure so what is really cool in this book and that what i think she does really well um, she did it well in Dear Martin too, but she just has the voice of these kids and she really explores how gangs play a role in, in certain communities. And I thought that was just really interesting. And I don't think anybody does it as well as Nick Stone. So I, I highly, if there's one YA book on this list, I, I think you, that you're going to read, I encourage it to be Dear Justice. On a light and a kind of lighter note, I don't want to say totally lighter. We have a new Karen McManus. So you may know her from One of Us is Lying, which continues to be on the New York Times bestseller list. So in The Cousins, this is just a family thriller. Um, a group of cousins are brought back to their grandmother's home by these just really vague letters. And each of the cousins' parents, so the grandmother's kids, make them go because they are no longer in the inheritance. So really, this is just a ploy of who's going to get the money. Well, when all the cousins get to the place in the Northeast, they just, they start to connect their stories and things aren't exactly what they seem. If I had one word to describe this book, it is 100% deception. I love this and there is, it's just so good. I, I think she writes thrillers better than anybody. Um, on a lighter note, we have Jennifer Niven's new book, Breathless. So this made me feel like I was 17 again. Claude is in Ohio and her parents are now separating and she and her mom go to Cumberland Island, Georgia, which is significant for me because I grew up on St. Simons and they're really close to each other. And Claude meets an island boy, Maya, and she instantly falls head over heels. Um, I think Jennifer Niven is just so great at exploring teenagers and their vulnerabilities. And in this book, Claude really struggles with her virginity. Should she lose it? Should she not lose it? Um, it it's so sensitive and just so compelling and a true coming of age story. I absolutely love this book. So something that is very timely, <laughs> a book about the college admission scandals. So Julie Buxbaum, you may know her from Tell Me Three Things, What to Say Next and Hope and Other Punchlines, writes an epic tale of a college admissions um, bust, I guess, girls accepted, and then the FBI and police officers with guns drawn showed up to her door and ruined her life, essentially. Um, she didn't know about the mishaps, but her mother orchestrated the whole thing. Um, I love Julie Buxbaum. I think she's wonderful with contemporary YA, and I encourage everybody to read this. For those who are a little bit more sensitive, um, I think she is wonderful for the 12-ish audience. Um, on a completely different note, we have Walk Toward the Rising Sun. So in this book, it's not a biography of a young Sudanese boy who went from child soldier to international peace activist, struggling rough UG to Hollywood actor. This is a one-of-a-kind story and a true adventure. I think if you need YA nonfiction, this is a true rags to riches story and everything in between. All right, now we're going to look ahead to spring 21. So the book All Are Welcome has been huge lately. This is Big Feelings. So emotional literacy is a huge topic. This book deals with emotional literacy with a cast of very diverse characters. I love this book. This is, we're, this is one of our top picture books of spring 21 and it is just wonderful. Um, another rep pick. So you know Karen Cushman from The Midwife's Apprentice, The Newberry Winning, new, Midwife's Apprentice and Catherine Called Birdie. And so now she has a new historical middle grade novel, which is The War and Millie McGonagall. In this Millie struggling with life in California during World War II. It, I love Karen Cushman. I read her when I was in elementary school, so I'm just, I'm thrilled that we have this book on her, our list. The heroine is so realistic. She is spunky. Millie is spunky. She is neurotic, and she is just so lovable. 
a really cool well for a cabbage native. So the guild, oh, I think my internet connection is unstable. Okay, now it says it's back. Sorry about that. Um, so to me, this is the must have book of 2021. Um, so there are the gilded ones and the non gilded ones, and there are purity ceremonies held at every when women come of age and they actually slice their wrist open and see what they bleed. So if you're, if you bleed gold, you're considered unclean. So then you are marched over to another land to train as a soldier. And so the main character in this is gilded and she is a warrior and she actually ends up saving a bunch of people and becomes a hero of sorts. Um, this is a trilogy. So the ending ends on a cliffhanger, but I absolutely love this book and I think the cover is stunning. Everything, everything about this is just so wonderful and fits into the YA that the YA fantasy that's hot right now and that I think will continue to be hot for the next year. And that is it. I apologize if my internet went out because I just saw the notification. So um, yeah, I will stop sharing my screen and mute myself for Donnie. Let me know if you have any questions. Excellent. Thank you so much, Lauren. So Donnie, now it is over you. Okay, let me try to do this share screen thing. <laughs> that was great, Lauren. I wish I had not, was not following you. Okay, let me see here. Um, I think. Do you see that? Do you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, we're just with the PowerPoint to open. Okay. Are you seeing just the thing or are you seeing all along the side too? Um, just seeing the um the main file screen. menu. Okay. Okay. Um so I'm I'm Donnie Kay. Um I'm with Penguin Young Readers. Um and Penguin Young Readers and Random House Children's together are Penguin Random House. Um, so we're, we're both excited to be here and show you our books. I'm, um, I was just, speaking of independent bookstores, I was just from five to six watching uh, a um, Zoom from Little Shop of Stories with one of our books that came out th today called Fauja Scene Keeps Going, uh, which I'd encourage you to go over. It's not on this, on this, but it was such a great, uh, Zoom with the author that if you have a chance to go buy Little Shop of Stories and check it out, it's about a 109 year old man who runs in marathons. It's amazing. Um, so <clears throat> I'm, I'm starting with a book that came out in June only because it's such a huge book for us this summer. It's been number one on the New York Times bestseller list. Uh, it's Anti-Racist Baby. I'm sure you all know of Ibram Kendi, Dr. Kendi. Uh, from uh, his National Book Award winning Stamp from the Beginning and How to Be an Anti-Racist. Um, so this is a board book that we released and um, in it, in a mere nine steps, babies and toddlers um, can be on the way to being part of the solution. He unpacks in concise Hi. language. Sorry, Donnie, we cannot see your presentation. Oh, shoot. We can only see the folder where, the, um, where it's housed. Well, okay, share. I don't know how Me. to do it then. Hold on. Share. You're sharing Is this. It? Is that it? Can you use it there? It looks like you need to double click on the present, on the, um, on the actual presentation. Is it open on your computer? Yeah, it's, it's open. Hold on. Um, Maybe you shared the okay, wait. wrong. Let me see. No, it's exactly what we, is it there now? No. Maybe exit sharing and did when you share, did it allow you to share specific boxes? You know, you're talking to um, Sorry. Sorry. Um I will let me see. I get I don't even know if I'm still in. Hey Donnie, do you want me to try to pull it up on my screen and I'll try to share it? But I don't know if you can you the one. No, I think it's a different one. The one I sent you. Oh, maybe you're talking no, you about sent him one too. Let me see if I can pull it up. Okay. For some reason it's not. I thought I hit. Okay. Let me go down here to share one more time. No, maybe. A, 
I don't know. It says you are screen sharing. You mm -hmm. are screen sharing. It's sharing. Just not yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Let me see if Lauren <coughs> can share. Sorry. Donnie, do you have your PowerPoint open now? I was thinking maybe you needed to click out of the, the file menu and then you could share your screen with the, the PowerPoint. I don't know what you mean by click out of the file menu because I'm not. Oh, oh just oh. X out of it and close it. Close that? Mm -hmm. I know. Um, yeah. Hold on, sorry. Um, let me see if I can get back to this and share screen. And does that show? Yes, that shows. Was that showing before? No, that was not showing before. Okay. No, okay. but that does it. So yeah, just start your slideshow and you should be good. Okay, I, do you see anti-racist baby? Yes. Yes. Okay. It doesn't look quite like hers did where it just shows the, okay, anyway. So this is anti-racist baby. And um, so this is a board book. We also did a, a picture book right afterwards, which we dropped in. Uh, so it's actually the same book, but with more conversations for parents to have with a little bit older children, maybe preschoolers and such. Uh, so they've been really big books for us this summer. Uh, here's one of the inner pictures. An anti-racist baby is bred, not born. And these are the type spreads that are on there. Are you guys seeing this now? Yes, yes we are. Okay, okay. I am every good thing. I'm so excited about this book. This is um, by Derek Barnes and Gordon C. James, who you will all remember were the team that brought the Newbery Honor and Caldecott Honor crown and Ode to the Fresh Cut. Um, they live in Charlotte. Um, they actually are gonna be the KidNote speakers for the Decatur Book Festival on their virtual Decatur Book Festival uh, on September 5th at 10 a.m. Saturday. You could go through the Decatur Book Festival um, website or Little Shop of Stories and, uh, and hear them speak, which Derek Barnes, I met him last year at Decatur Book Festival and he was just powerful, amazing. Um, and this book has a confident black narrator, this young boy. He's proud of everything that makes him who he is. He's creative, smart, funny, and a good friend. And these are, and, and it says in this book, there are superheroes in our midst. Um, the author and artist said that their goal with this book is for black youth to see themselves and to feel good about themselves. And they certainly have with this book. Um, the lines, I am Saturday mornings in the summertime. I am two bounces and a front flip off the diving board. Just all positive things that make a black boy feel positive and strong, which is Derek Barnes's goal in life. Um, the Invisible Alphabet, it's, uh, this is a book that was very hard to sell to people and to explain to people. It's the ABC of Things Unseen, uh, which is sort of a high concept book. Um, for instance, B is for bear uh, or clear. This is C is for clear. Um, there, it's... Um, Nothing to see in this A to Z other than clues as to what was once or will soon be there. The 26 alphabetical scenarios are conceptual, mysterious, and meticulous, deliberately hinting at a story that happens off the page. So it's not, it, it opens conversations with children. It's just gorgeous. Um, uh, but it's not your typical um, ABC book, but really fun and a great gift. 
book for adults or kids. Bunheads is by Prima Ballerina and the first African-American female principal um, dancer with the American Ballet Theater, Misty Copeland. Um, this is the story of young Misty when she discovers her love of dance. It's autobiographical. Um, this has already gotten many starred reviews. Um, it celebrates the joy of dance. It's got a glimpse into the young girl when she first goes to ballet class, uh, her first audition, preparing for her role in Capellia. There's, um, uh, it also includes some scenes with, um, <laughs> that look dark and foreboding, but it's how she felt really scared at times. And in the back, you know, peeking out to see what's gonna be happening. Uh, it also has all ballet techniques. It's just a beautiful book. And in, um, and we'll be uh, producing and she'll be writing um, a series of chapter books for us in fall 2021. They were supposed to be out in this spring, but we've pushed things back because of, of COVID. So to give a bigger place for this chapter book series. Uh, and it'll be called Bunheads too and written by her uh, for young kids. And then I'm so excited to have what we'll build. Um, Oliver Jeffers, this is his follow-up to Here We Are. I don't know if you all knew Here We Are, but this was, uh, Oliver wrote it when his son Harland was born and it was an introduction to the world, to Harland. He wanted him to see what the world held for him and a multicultural world and all the excitement of the world. It's a perfect baby gift, which I give to everyone who has a baby. Uh, and now we have another one to give to more people who have babies because he, after Harlan was born, the birth of his daughter, Mari, he decided he needed to have a book for her. So this is a father talking to his daughter about what we'll build in the world. What shall we build, you and I? We'll build a watch to keep our time. I'll build your future and you'll build mine. And it's just a hopeful, delightful book and with his characteristically beautiful art uh, that explains the world. Here's I'll build your future and you'll feel build mine. Just very creative. And uh, he's done a lot. Of, he's been traveling around the world this year. He's done a lot of um, uh, Instagram stories and he's read this on Instagram and he's been all over the place showing this art. He does actual paintings that are just exquisite. So uh, it's been really fun to watch the process. Uh, and this will be out in October. Uh, the next book is My Rainbow, and this is a true story of uh, Trinity and Deshauna Neal. Um, Trinity is a, um, she's a um, transgender aunt, girl, and she wanted to have long hair because she was, tra um, she thought it was part of her identity. And her mother helped her, they went to wig stores, but her mother designed this rainbow um, wig for her, which totally captured her personality. And, you know, they were on a lot of, uh, you know, Good Morning America and things like that. They've been in the um, social media a lot. But anyway, this book really captures the beautiful relationship between the mother and Trinity and how supportive um, she was with her, with the process. Um, and of course, my daughter decides to FaceTime me right when I'm on <laughs> on here. Okay, <laughs> uh, there's a picture from my rainbow when they're looking at all the different hair. Um, now, Fighting Words just came out a couple days ago, a few days ago, two weeks ago, and this is by Kimberly Brubecker uh, Bradley. And this, she's the author of The War That Saved My Life, which is a Newbery Honor book a couple of years ago. She's always written historical fiction, but this book is uh, personal in many ways to her, but she hasn't, she says she won't say exactly what people this represented in her life because it involves two sisters, Delia and Suki, who are dealing with the consequences of their stay with their mother's boyfriend and the abuse that happens. And it's people, a lot of people wondered about us selling a book for 10 year olds with abuse in it, but um, it's, it's already has seven starred reviews. And Kimberly says that we're, we're starting the conversation way too late with kids. Um, 
according to the CDC, one in every four girls and one in every six boys will be abused by the time they're 18 years old. And a lot of abused children feel as if they did something wrong and they've never, they keep it inside themselves and they're ashamed. And um, it's handled gently in this book. It is not, nothing's on the page, but it is uh, an important book. And after reading it, I think it's a book that should be in every library and every child should be able to see themselves if this has happened to them and find out there's nothing wrong with them, that they didn't bring it on themselves. And uh, it's just very powerful and, and um, just an amazing book. I, I really loved it. Um, the next book is Thirteens by Kate Alice Marshall. She wrote uh, a couple of YA books for us, I Am Still Alive, uh, and another one last year. Uh, but this one is her first middle grade, and I love this book. It is called Thirteens. It's sort of Neil Gaiman's Coraline meets Stranger Things. And it's um, just that right amount of spookiness. Uh, at the heart of the book is a friendship story, like all good books for middle grade. Uh, and these three kids keep their sense of humor through the spooky, but not horror. It's spooky. Mr. January is a character that will send chills up you, but he, nothing in there is horror or graphic. It's just, uh, just got right, just the right amount of spookiness for a 10 year old, eight, nine or 10 year old to read. And it's just fascinating story. I loved it. Uh, Paige Turner and perfect for the Halloween season. Um, our next book is actually going to be in the New York Times book review, I think this week with a great review of it. Um, this is Letters from Cuba by Ruth Behar. Uh, she won the Pura Bell Prey Award for um, her book, Lucky Broken Girl, uh, that came out a couple of years ago. Uh, Ruth, that was her story of growing up. She's a Cuban girl. Uh, Cuban Jewish and she decided to tell the story of her grandmother and her family's history. They had, they, uh, his, her grandmother escaped the pogroms in Poland and the stop that they could make because a lot of countries wouldn't take Jewish people was Cuba and there she finds, she and her, she meets her dad who had left earlier and they keep writing letters back and forth trying to save the rest of their family. Um, and she does discover uh, uh, that it is a very open society there and people are not treating them as if they are um, horrible the way they were treated in Poland. And they lear she learns Spanish, she becomes fluent in it. She loves the island and the, she becomes a seamstress and starts an entrepreneur. And uh, it really is the story of how her family did start. They, uh, and what happened to get to them to the United States. And it's, it's really, really great historical fiction. Um, and Ruth Behar, I just saw, heard her interviewed too. Um, she's the first Latina to win a MacArthur Genius Award. Um, she's fascinating. She has had a fascinating life. So I, I really love this book. Uh, and then Jackie Woodson, I don't think she needs any introduction. Um, National Book Award winner and multiple award winner in every category and uh, everything she can be for literature is Jackie Woodson. So this book is set in the early 2000 when concussions in the NFL were just being discovered and it's told through the eyes of a boy named ZJ whose dad had been a great um, NFL player, but is starting to act different and things are going on, which they're starting to pick up on. And um, it's really quite, you know, stunning book, beautifully written. Um, book page said, a stirring character driven novel in verse before the ever after doesn't sugarcoat harsh realist realities, but addresses them with considered care and optimism. ZJ's quest Quiet resilience and the network of nurturing figures who surround him suggest a path lit by a glimmer of hope. Um, Jack, Jackie will be interviewed in NPR's All Things Considered the week of September 8th, so you'll be able to catch her interviews. Um, and this book I highly recommend to everybody. It's, it's in her usual 
way she's just totally captured a moment in time and, and really made these people real. Uh, the Circus of Stolen Dreams is, for those who read Circus Mirandus, you would like this book and The Night Gardener. Uh, basically, um, after Andrea's brother Francis disappears, everything changes in her life. So she discovers a magical realm in the woods near her house called Reverie. And when you go there, you can, you can go there if you can give up one of your memories. And the memory she's given up is the bad feelings, the night that her brother's lost because she's blaming herself. But she finds out that giving up your memories also comes with a lot of other entanglements. And she meets a girl there, Penny, and it's just how they get through. They follow the clues and find out what happened. So this is, this is really like a, a page turner and uh, really good, I loved it. Um, Closer to Nowhere is by Ellen Hopkins. She has written so many YA books in, in verse and people know her from way back, um, New York Times bestselling author, but she's written a middle grade here in verse. And this is um, based on when Ellen Hopkins' own grandson, uh, who had been abandoned by Ellen's daughter when her daughter went through a relapse, uh, Ellen found him living in squalor, and she took he and his two siblings in, and his trauma was later diagnosed as PTSD. So she based this character of Cal in, on her grandson. But um, this is told through alternating voices. Hannah, Hannah's cousin Cal, comes to live with them when he's when his mother dies, and it's he's going through so much that he pushes people away and is um, defensive about things. And so it's it's how Hannah learns to deal with him and how the family, how she's blaming things that are happening in the family on him and he's how he's feeling, but it's how they all come together. It reminded me a little of one for the Murphys, um, but I think this one is super strong, super fast read because it is in verse and I think it's, it's a very powerful story. Um, and then I have Peacemaker by Joseph Bruchak. Um, he, of course, has written so many Native American stories that are classics, Code Talker, which you all probably know about the Navajo people, and almost every tribe has been represented in his books. And this one is about uh, an Iroquois boy who is, uh, during the creation of the Iroquois Confederacy, um, and Hannah DeCamp, who's my buyer at Avid Bookshop, which is up in Athens, Georgia, wrote this great review of it, which I thought I'd read. It is hard to not see our conflict-laden times reflected back at us in this stunningly powerful tale of the founding of the Iroquois Confederacy. And it's easy to see a way forward in Bruchak's concise lyricism and full, fully dimensional characters, a way that rejects anger and violence and embraces storytelling, listening, and remembering. Um, this was another one that I, I thought is even great for a reluctant reader. It's sparse words and just very, a lot of action, but a lot to think about too. It was beautiful. Darius the Great deserves better as a companion to Darius the Great is not okay. Uh, the first book um, focused on when Darius, who has um, depression, uh, goes to Iran and visits his family in Iran. He didn't know anything about Persian culture. And it's about coming into his to himself and learning about the culture he came from. He also discovers that he is gay. Uh, in this companion book, he has a boyfriend, an internship. He has everything, but he wants to know how to handle life now because he's He's still very confused, but I think this book takes off where that one ended and brings you into how what it means to be a multiracial gay teenager in the United States. And uh, it's great. This has already gotten three starred reviews too. Um, and Watch Over Me. This, once again, three starred reviews already. And this is Nina LaCour who 
uh, last year won the Prince Award uh, for Watch Over Me. This is a little bit different from her other books in that it's a ghost story, but the ghosts are, um, it still has the same emotional punch as her previous books and has all the feelings and everything, but the ghosts are interwoven in there and they represent the past that the character uh, Mika is trying to get away from. And School Library Journal said, La Cour presents a ghost story that is moving, unsettling, and full of atmospheric beauty. This is a quiet contemporary tale filled with loneliness and dark undertones. And the cover is amazing. <laughs> I think most kids would love to pick that one up. Uh, How It All Blew Up is, uh, we're calling it Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda Goes to Italy. Arvin Armadi uh, was at the Decatur Book Festival last year too, and I talked to him for quite a while. And he told me that this is the book that he was meant to write. He's written a couple other books for us because um, it's basically autobiographical. Uh, the character in the book, Amir, always knew he would be coming out to his Muslim family and he knew it would be messy, but he didn't think that he would be in, end up in an airport interrogation room. And this is, the timing for this was crazy. He started writing this a couple years ago, not, and not knowing that there were gonna be problems with immigrants trying to come in from uh, Iran where his family is. And um, the family has a fight on board the plane and they all get pulled about him coming out and they get pulled into immigration, into these interrogation rooms and he tells his life story. And it's got humor and a lot going for it, but it really is very, very true to him. And um, the timing couldn't have been more perfect for this book though. So this book, Everybody Looking, uh, this is a story um, that um, Candace Elo wrote. Uh, she is. She was mentored by Jason Reynolds, and you, uh, who is a rock star YA author, you all know. Um, this book is uh, a debut novel in verse. Also, uh, here's what Jason Reynolds had to say about it. This is a story about the sometimes toxic and heavy expectations set on the backs of first-generation children. The pressures woven into the family dynamic, culturally and socially, about childhood secrets with sharp teeth, and ultimately about a liberation that taunts you with every young person. And uh, this is about a young girl, Ada, who is torn. Her, parent, her father is from Africa and her mother is an African-American, but needy and absent, not very supportive mother. And her father wants to raise her in a certain way and teaches her to dance only so that she'll learn the culture of his country, but she takes it from there and it's the movement of dance that liberates her and makes her be the person she is, which makes her not follow her father's practical aspirations for life. Um, and this book goes back and forth from her early college days at Howard University to scenes from the first grade, second grade, and sixth grade um, scenes that shaped her life. Um, and this is, yeah, this is a beautiful book. And Super Fake Love Song. This is by our, uh, we love David Yoon. Last year he wrote Frankly in Love and he is married to Nicola Yoon who wrote Everything, Everything. Um, and his books do deal with Asian American youths and their, how their Asian, um, their family, pressures to live to certain expectations and then fall and they always have to do with love falling in love and the conflicts with family uh this is a really fun this is a really fun story and it's got um uh it's a real heartfelt teen romance it's got strong family connections realistic drama but really the beating heart of this story is the struggle between the two brothers who love each other, but don't always love who each other are. And, and uh, he had, uh, one of the brothers has taken, you know, sort of stretched the truth to say that he's a rock star uh, and he has to live up to 
everything goes wild. He becomes very popular suddenly, but he has to face what he, that he has used somebody else's identity to try to make himself look better. Um, and the last one here is A Sky Beyond the Storm. And um, this is the fourth book in the Ember and the Ashes. Well, we thought it was a trilogy. Uh, Ember and the Ashes, A Torch Against the Night and Reaper at the Gate. But uh, Saba Tahir had left it. This was such a huge book for us. And she had left the last book with another dangling ending. So she's finally wrapped it up in Sky Beyond the Storm. Uh, this is really just an addictive series. It's got the addictive quality of the Hunger Games combined with the fantasy of Harry Potter and the brutality of the Game of Thrones. And it's just a must read. Uh, we're excited about this. It's coming out the 1st of December. Um, and that's all I had on this. Uh, I realized after I did this that there were a couple of Holiday House books I wished I had put on here because we also distribute Holiday House. And one of them I just want to mention, I don't have it written up here, is Pine Island Home by Polly Horvath. Um, and she's a Newbury Award winning author. And it, it's a middle grade. And it reminds me of Little Women Meets Counting by Sevens, uh, which is a strange combination, but it works. And it's a really great story. I loved it. Four sisters trying to make their way in the world and not get separated because, uh, and they have to use every sort of bag and the you know every single game they can to make it work and uh, they make family out of people that should that it's hard to imagine making family out of and then one other one is a picture book uh anil porter who used to run roaring press he's at holiday house has his own imprint and the book is called i talk like a river and the reason i'm bringing it up besides the fact that it has just breathtaking art in it um there was a speech during the DNC um, last week by a young boy who stutters, and he was very brave and got up and spoke about how Joe Biden inspired him because he stuttered his whole life, and then he looked at him and realized that Joe Biden had been, been a stutterer also, and he actually spoke to him about how to overcome it. And this book is just really powerful and breathtakingly beautiful, and the father explains to the son how his voice, his he talks like a river, like the tides coming in and out or like the breaks and the waves and that he teaches him about it. But it's done in very simple terms. I wish I had put some spreads in here, but it's just so gorgeous. So um, so there, I talk like a river and Pine, Pine Island Home are the two that aren't on here. And that's it. I think I have to unshare. Yes, yeah, stop share. Well, thank you so much, Donnie and Lauren. If anyone has any questions quickly, uh, feel free to type them in the chat and we can go ahead and ask those to the two reps this evening. Once again, as a reminder, if you didn't already sign up for the raffle, feel free to go ahead and do so by sending it to Allie. Her email is in the chat and we will do that. And we will be packing up bags probably later this week and probably working on distributing them um next week for you all um but we will email you and let you know when uh we are going to start dropping those off on anyone's porches um so if anyone has any quick questions let us know like i said in my intro i'm very excited about the georgians and those folks with georgia connections that we have coming out like nick um which one of you donnie lauren had the um the no ordinary thing the gz schmidt yeah, that was oh, mine. I'm sorry, I didn't have, I had it on my first presentation I sent to you, but then it, it got somehow messed up and I ended up grabbing a different presentation. I realized afterwards I'd sent you, I wanted to, uh, to talk about that too. And I was kicking myself when you showed it. And that's another Holiday House book too. They've got a fantastic list. I could possibly do a whole talk just about the holiday house books because they're so great and i really love that book and yes there is a georgia connection so excellent excellent so i think this was for lauren someone was asking about uh, a pinkish colored book that is all the talk for middle grades it looked like the girl was laying down with her hands oh. behind her yeah when life gives you mangoes okay. yep um what just i i think she maybe just missed it and was was trying to oh, figure okay. out yeah so 
Clara is the main girl in there. She's 12 and she, I don't want to give this spoiler, but I feel like I should. She's suffering from PTSD from my friend drowned right next to her in Rocky Waters, but nobody, she can't explain that to anybody. The town that she's in is very conservative and anything that's a little off kilter or not with the norm is seen as witchcraft. And she actually shares the same skill with her uncle. Um, so the incident with her friend drowning kind of sparked like a clairvoyancy. So she can see spirits just like her uncle who was on the other half of the island in the house recluse. And then there's a nice moment, you know how middle grade has to come full circle and um, there's a big storm and um, Clara and a couple of her friends actually get stranded at her uncle's home for a while. And then all the other townspeople come to the uncle's home and they kind of have this nice circle time moment where they explore each other's differences and realize that they're more alike than different. It's really, it's really a great story. And she's the first, she's a debut author too. I should have mentioned that. Well, there, there seems to be a lot of debut authors on these lists. And, you know, I'm, I'm, very excited too that you know looking at the covers of these books you know there are just so many powerful black and brown faces staring out at you now when you look at these covers and that's just such a difference from a few years ago but i mean they just look like absolutely amazing stories i'm really thrilled that this is a three book series yes i know a lot of folks love series like that as well um anything else that maybe we should look out for um, that you, you didn't put in, maybe it's like a sleeper or something like that, or just a personal favorite? Donnie, you're muted. There's, there are so many, it's almost, I, I, I was feeling horrible today when I flipped through my catalog, because there's so many books I'd like to talk about. And I really tried to stress uh, a lot of the African-American and the the multicultural books for this presentation because of what's happening right now. But we have so many things I wanted to talk about. And even she gave a sneak peek into spring 2021. And we have the, we have Winter Keep coming out, which is uh, in the Graceling uh, trilogy. Once again, not just a trilogy, this will be the fourth book um, story. We've got, um, we've got another book <laughs> by um, the team that brought you Last Stop on Market Street, I, I, which is Milo Takes on the World. We have so many great books coming out in the spring that I'm looking through today and felt like I wish I could share with you, but we'll do another one sometime and we'll bring on, or I could send a list of the top titles coming out uh, to Joe and then he could, you know, or maybe a little collection to show you some of the big ones coming out that are really fun. Oh, absolutely. That would be great. And you know, I'm sure our viewers this evening and viewers later on would love, you know, a spring update, um, you know, to see what's coming out. I you know, it was always... A... Sorry, I can talk about a couple more if you want. <laughs> that are oh, out go, right go, now. go right ahead. All right, I'll be really quick. Um, the World Needs More Purple People, Kristen Bell and Ben Hart, that came out in June. Um, that's just, again, celebrating people who are more like than different. You see a, lot, a diverse cast of characters in that, and it's more of an insult, incidental diversity rather than this, that, rather than just diversity. It's really nice that everybody's coming together. And then the one book that I actually made me, when Donnie was talking about things that were out before and everything, is um, Kim Johnson, This Is My America. It came out a few weeks ago. I think I have a copy of it. Sorry, I know this is really bad. Um, okay, I don't, I lied. Sorry. Okay, so this is my America's Kim Johnson. It's basically Dear Martin meets Just Mercy. Um, actually, the lawyer character is modeled after Brian Stevenson in the book. It is wonderful. It really explores the criminal justice system and wrongful convictions. I absolutely love that book. And then um, a couple of things looking ahead. Actually, all the way to summer 20. One, can't believe we're talking about that. We actually have fall stuff, 20, fall 21 things coming up the next couple of days. But summer 21, we have a new Jerry Spinelli middle grade, which is fantastic. And it's called Dead Wednesday. And it, it, it's just phenomenal. And I can't wait for you all to read it. And yeah, I'll stop talking now so everybody can get on with their dinner. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Lauren. And of course, Edith, thank you for the folks telling us that a spring book preview would be great. You know, I know we've all been in our homes. 
our library is only open for contactless pickup, so it's a little difficult for people to discover books on shelves. You know, not all the bookstores are fully open, but you know, they're taking special orders and they're delivering to your doorstep and they're, they're really trying to connect readers with books. And you know, we always hope that you shop our independent bookstores like Little Shop of Stories and Brave and Kind um, and the adult bookstores as well. Once again, thank you, Donnie. Thank you, Lauren. We will see you all again in the spring, maybe with more surprises. Thank you all so much for allowing us into your homes this evening. Have a good evening and we will see you all very soon.